I told you I'm gonna find something for July. It's time for Games of Decades Past. July, 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 always the most boring month of the year. Even this year, the only game that really came out that I kind of liked is um, Shin Megami Tensei 4, which I haven't even played, but it's the only, like, AAA sort of sort game that came out. And you can say maybe Dynasty Warriors 8, but I don't care too much about Dynasty Warriors. Same thing with 2003, I only had two choices. One of them was Ape Escape 2, which is a great game and I love it, but I do want to review those games down the line, so um, I'm gonna skip Ape Escape for now. Let's talk about the other choice that I had, which is Mario Golf Toadstool Tour. Recording this video, I haven't played any of the other Mario Golf games, uh, in particular, not the what should I call it, the N64 one. And the game is a lot is a lot like Hot Shots Golf, but I haven't played that series too much either. So this is pretty much the only entry I've played, and I like the game. It was pretty much my time waster during the two months of the summer of 2003, because all the games of August came out later that month, so it was a really fun way to fill those two months when I was kind of bored in the summer. In addition to that, um, there's just a lot to do in single player, which is pretty impressive. Um, tons of content, you have like tournaments and different mini games. Uh, like some of the examples, there are mini games when uh, you get specific clubs with a slot machine, or there's one where you have to hit the ball and make it go through giant rings that are flying in the air. There's a lot of variety and a lot of stuff, you know, to explore in the game, which is really surprising. You can tell the game gets a lot of care from Camelot, and they developed it, and for those of you who don't know, they also made um, the Mario Tennis game one year later. Um, I would say that Mario Tennis is more geared towards the multiplayer experience, whereas this game is more into the single player. Uh, the thing they have in common though, they both have great intros. Um, as you can probably tell by my top 20 intros, I prefer the Mario Tennis one, but the Mario Golf one is still pretty charming too, it's pretty much the precursor to what we're gonna get in Mario, uh, in Mario Power Tennis. I really like the game, I think it's really, you know, it's surprisingly very down-to-earth, very grounded. You don't see balls flying in the air or jumping just because it's a Mario game. The physics are related to golf, as far as I know. I mean, again, I don't golf myself. I haven't even played a single Tiger Woods game in my life. But, you know, you have to consider stuff like, you know, the wind and the... and the English on the ball, whatever that means. <laughs> no. And you have to realize, you know, that each terrain has different, you know, valleys and layers that you have to kind of figure out what kind of power you want to hit the ball. And then there are also different techniques, like, you know, you can do top spin, which makes the ball go faster. You can do a back spin, which makes the ball stop before it goes too far. There's a lot of mechanics here that they all come together, they work really well. That's one of the strengths of the game, that it's so grounded in reality. But it's also one of its flaws too. I would say the problem with the game is the fact that when you think of a Mario Golf game, you expect some zany stuff like, you know, giant mushrooms or maybe golfing on Bowser's castle, but uh, you don't get that. And to me, that's kind of a miss because I kind of wish you would do that right away. You do get those tracks, but that's basically only happening after your fourth tournament. So in other words, you have to play the first three and then only on the last three you get the more unique stuff which is totally different than uh, what Mario Power Tennis did th that gave you all the gimmick courses right away, which I think was a much smarter choice. So, you know, you start the game, you're on a, like on a green field, but it doesn't feel too different than Hot Shots Golf or Tiger Woods even. Except for the crazy, you know, topspin attacks, but other than that, you know, that's about it, I would say. Um, the game is still very fun. I would say, you know, if you're not into golf, and I want to emphasize, if you are not into golf, you will actually might enjoy this if you want, you know, something to help you pass time, like, it helped me. I really enjoy this, like, it's one of those games, you know, you play, like, one hole and you think to yourself, ah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm done with this, you know, this is pretty much the entire game, but then you were trying to get the best score possible. You tried to get the hole closer to the par as much as you can with getting the lowest score possible. There's something intriguing about it that I really liked, and I think Camelot did a fantastic job with this game. I 
heard that the other games are not as good as the GameCube one. I know there is one coming up also for the 3DS, and um, I hope it's gonna be as good. And um, yeah, so that's pretty much a short installment of Games of Decades Past. Uh, I really hope you enjoy. Next month is definitely gonna be a lot more competitive because it's August, and that's when things are becoming interesting again. Pretty much from August to like, I would say, November. Even December to an extent, I'm gonna be flooded with stuff, so ah, this will be fun. Take care, guys. Thank you for watching. Oh, and uh, blah, I guess.